When I was a little girl, I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house because my parents worked. So my brother, my sister and myself would go there at the weekends and a lot of time in the holidays as well. We did very different things at their house. We played Scrabble and dominoes and card games. We would dress up and put on shows. And there were a lot of stories. And sometimes they would talk to us about when they were young. And they'd tell us stories about when my mum was a little girl and the sort of things that she used to get up to. There weren't many books at their house. So the books that they had, we knew really well. They had this book of Grimm's fairy tales. And I thought it was called Grimm's because the stories in it were grim. But actually the brothers that collected the stories, their surname was Grimm, the brothers Grimm. Although some of the stories are quite grim in this. And they also had a book of fables. And these are mostly animal stories. And sometimes my nana would read these to us and sometimes she would just tell the stories in her own words and change bits and add little things and, and name some of the animals uh, after us. And that was great. It was like we were inside the story. And I'm going to do that today. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories from Aesop's Fables. And I'm going to put my nana and my dada in the first story. Her name is Ina Wall. And my dad's name is Harry Wall. And the first story is The Fox and the Crow. One bright morning, as the day began, Harry Wall was chopping wood in the early morning sun. Ina Wall made breakfast of cheese and homemade bread. They'd been up since six o'clock and it was high time they were fed. Ina placed the plate of food above the window seat, calling, Harry Duck, have a break, have something to eat. He never got the chance though to have that lovely food. A crow had seen her place it there and she was in the mood for a little light refreshment. Un petit morceau. And so that crow just helped herself to breakfast on the go. She gulped the bread and grabbed the cheese and pinched it with her beak. Then returning to her treetop tower, she <laughs> gave a happy squeak. A fox observed what occurred and licked his lips with glee. I'll find a way to get that bird to give her snack to me. I just need to get that crow to open her beak wide, whilst making sure I'm nicely placed to catch what is inside. He wandered over, gazing upwards, seemingly in awe. My! What a splendid bird you are. I've not seen you before. Your eyes are bright. Your beak is strong. Your feathers gleam in the morning sun. Your silhouette is full of style. Permit me, please, to gaze a while. The crow, both flattered and surprised, opened wide those bright black eyes and struggling at first to speak because the cheese was in her beak she giggled <laughs> nervously and fluttered then oh, thank you sir she tightly uttered <laughs> you flatter me with your fine words <laughs> that you say that to all the birds no not at all, for you're the best. I have no interest in the rest. The other birds I cannot see. They are invisible to me. Have no doubt, you're my first choice. I'd love to hear your singing voice. I imagine it must be so sweet, so pure, so heavenly. 
creature as divine as you must have the voice of an angel, too. And to deny me is too cruel, for I am a besotted fool. <laughs> Mr. Fox, I quite agree with all these things you say to me. I should have sung in opera, see? My mother said as much to me. Of course, I'll let you hear me sing. One moment, please, and I'll begin. <clears throat> oh, 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 oh. Out fell the cheese and tumbled down to where Fox waited on the ground. His jaws went snap. The cheese went squish. Mmm, that really was delish. But now this wailing's gone too far. Can you not hear how bad you are? Please, cease this screeching. Stop this row. I swear my ears are bleeding now. Mm, but, Foxy, you said I was fine. You said my voice would sound divine. You said I was a pretty thing and you persuaded me to sing. Tis true, and now you've shared your food, I'm feeling in a generous mood, so some advice I'll give you, dear. Don't believe everything you hear. Now, I'm going to show you how you can make a, a house. You've got a piece of paper about this size and this is origami paper and uh, I'm going to fold it into a little house but before I fold it I'm going to draw some of the things that I like to do at my Nana and Dada's house. So this is going to be my Nana's house so I'll write that in the middle and then in the corners I'm going to draw something that I like to do at her house. I'm going to draw a book because I enjoyed the stories a lot. And then I'm going to draw a big bowl of jelly because we had a lot of jelly at my Nana's house, a big pile of jelly in there. I'm going to draw a domino with five dots on one side and one dot on the other. And I'm going to draw, I'll draw a playing card. I think I'll make it an ace of hearts because they're the easiest thing to draw. There they are, although they should be red. So these are the four, four of the things that I love to do at my Nana's house. So when you've drawn your little pictures, fold the paper in half, making sure that they line up at the end like that, and then press the fold down so you get a really good crease in the paper. And then fold the paper again so that you've made it into a smaller square. And again, line it up with the edges really well, that's it. Then open it up and fold this side into the center like this. And then take this side and fold it in so that they meet in the middle. So like this. Okay, and now we're going to open up one side and with that sticking up in the air like that, just prise it apart and fold that crease there along the line underneath it and squash it down and that makes a roof on the house and you can see the jelly and the book and then the other side and 
fold it so that it's sticking up, hold it up, and then again, press down on that crease so that it lines up with that line. And you have another little roof. And really press the creases well. And then you can stand it up. And that's my Nana's house, full of all the things I love to do there. And you could do more pictures as well, but if you draw them on the corners, then you can see what's in the house. Let's have another story. I'll tell you the story of the frog and the ox. Many frogs were playing in a meadow. They were jumping into puddles, splash, 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 jumping into mud, jumping into smelly cow pads. They were having so much fun that they didn't notice when an enormous ox wandered into the field looking for some grass to eat. Mm. And he was so big that he didn't see all those little frogs jumping around way below on the ground, in and out of the grass. They were just so small. So his feet came down on top of them. Splat, splat, all squashed. Green and red mush, gone forever. Except one very lucky little frog. And he hopped all the way home to tell his mum what had happened. So this will be his mum. Here she is. Hop, 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 hop. Mum, this great big ox just came in the field and squashed everybody flat and I haven't got anybody left to play with now. And his mum was furious, really cross because she thought that she was the biggest animal in the whole field. She said, what, what do you mean a huge ox? Was it as big as me then? The frog looked at his mum and thought about that enormous ox and went, <laughs> yeah, it was like a hundred times bigger than you. Hmm, right, she said. And she took an enormous breath and puffed herself up. <sighs> was it as big as me now then, she said. And the frog looked at his mum and thought about that enormous ox. <laughs> yeah, it was 80 times bigger than you. Right, she said again. And she puffed herself up even more. <gasps> was it as big as me now then? Hmm? And the frog looked at his mum, thought about that enormous ox. <laughs> yeah, it was 60 times bigger than you. So she took another breath and another. And now her skin felt really stretched. Her throat felt tight and her eyes were bulging out of her head and she said <gasps> and the frog looked at his mum and thought about that enormous ox and he said <laughs> yep yeah, still 50 times bigger right she said she took another breath and suddenly Exploded all over the field, and the little frog went, Ugh. <laughs> and then he said, I am never going to try and look bigger than I really am. I'm Nikki Rafferty. Thank you for joining me and listening to my stories from Nana's house. You can find us on Facebook at Not Stopping Festival 